American plane maker Boeing is under close review by the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA. The events of Alaska Airlines Flight AS-1282 on January 5th and subsequent discoveries of loose bolts on 737 MAX aircraft have put Boeing under an intense spotlight in recent weeks. Ever since the tragic events in 2018 and 2019 involving the 737 MAX, the close relationship between the US government and Boeing has also become a hot topic of discussion. It's a relationship that we'll examine in today's video. Like many whole industries and individual corporations, Boeing employs agents to exert influence on government policy. These agents are commonly known as lobbyists who perform lobbying activities. As somewhat of an urban myth, since debunked by Merriam-Webster, the term lobbyist was believed to have come from those who gathered in the hotel lobbies where legislators were staying with the hopes of having influence on legislation. The use of lobbyists is not at all exclusive to Boeing and is indeed a practice that is well associated with American politics. Even Airbus employs lobbyists in the country. According to the website Open Secrets, the European plane maker is listed as having had 32 lobbyists in 2023, with lobbying expenditures totaling about $3 million. However, this is a fraction of the $14.5 million logged by Boeing in the same year. The American plane maker had 109 lobbyists in 2023. Clearly, lobbying is seen as a worthwhile investment, as companies can secure much larger gains as a result of government contracts or changes in legislation. Using another example of lobbying within the aviation industry, Airlines for America, or A4A, is the leading trade association for many of the country's passenger and cargo airlines. As stated on its website, the group advocates on behalf of its members to shape crucial policies and measures that promote safety, security, and a healthy U.S. airline industry, working collaboratively with airlines, labor, Congress, the administration, and other groups to improve aviation for the traveling and shipping public. Anyone familiar with U.S. politics will know that most major industries employ lobbyists whether it's in the realm of pharmaceuticals, agriculture, or manufacturing. And while it is a practice very much associated with the American system, lobbyists and influential trade associations work with other governments as well. The website lobbyfacts.eu highlights lobbying activities disclosed in the European Union, including from both Airbus and Boeing. But going back to the topic of Boeing in the United States, its lobbying activities mainly go to the company's Government Operations Office in Arlington, Virginia, positioned strategically near Washington, D.C. As stated on its website, Boeing Government Operations serves the company in three ways. Protecting and advancing the company's interests, competitiveness and reputation, winning support for Boeing programs, and shaping public policy issues that impact the company. The website goes on to say that this office, quote, works with public officials across all levels of government, federal, state, and local, to carry out this mission. It also works with various third parties, such as think tanks, trade associations, public policy groups, and international organizations. Boeing states that it has a procedure and numerous requirements for employees who engage in direct and indirect lobbying activities. The company also makes clear that it, quote, does not use any corporate dollars to support federal, state, or local campaign activities. At the same time, Boeing does have BPAC, or Boeing Political Action Committee. As noted by the company, BPAC is the single method used to make political contributions to local, state, and federal campaigns. Rather than being funded with corporate dollars, money comes from voluntary, personal contributions from its members, who are eligible Boeing employees and retirees. Lobbyists and political contributions aside, Boeing has another important way to influence government decisions – the provision of jobs. As any aviation enthusiast will know, the production of commercial aircraft large and small requires large teams of workers, 
from research and development to design and logistics, all the way to final assembly and aftermarket support. Boeing explains on its website that it employs approximately 145,000 employees around the world. Reuters reported in January 2023 that the manufacturer employed about 136,000 workers in the US alone. The company creates jobs indirectly as well, claiming that it works with some 12,000 businesses and supports more than 1 million supplier-related jobs across the country. The location that a major company such as Boeing chooses to set up operations can be another way to win favor among politicians. It's no coincidence that Boeing's government operations webpage has a document for each US state, highlighting the number of direct and indirect jobs, as well as various Boeing suppliers and vendors within that state. In speaking with a Senate aide, the website Politico highlights this relationship, saying, Boeing's role as a major employer affects the company's relationships with Congress, for good and for ill. Its money and jobs have boosted the economies of many states over the years, but the company has also moved facilities in the past, taking those jobs and economic benefits with it, decisions that still sting. So what does political influence look like in the real world? Really, anything to do with government action will see influence from lobbyists. Here are just a few examples. Lobbying was known to be a core activity in Boeing's push to have the US government apply hefty tariffs on Delta's order of the Bombardier C-Series. Of course, on the other side, Bombardier would have had its own lobbyists urging the Canadian government to fight the decisions made by the US Department of Commerce. According to the American Prospect, Boeing went on a lobbying blitz to secure extensions from Congress to meet deadlines regarding certification of the 737 MAX 7 and MAX 10, while Open Secrets notes that lobbying in support of increased defense spending gave U.S. defense contractors, including Boeing, a strong start to the 2023 fiscal year. Finally, an examination by the New York Times after the crash of an Ethiopian Airlines 737 MAX 8 found that Boeing and its allies helped craft legislation that quote-unquote undercut oversight. As the media outlet notes, there was a push for laws that allowed manufacturers to challenge regulators over safety disputes, making it difficult for the government to usurp companies' authority. As a very slight tangent, it's been reported that Boeing's current lobbyists lack industry-specific experience. The ongoing fallout from AS-1282 has again drawn attention to Boeing's relationship with the government. Apparently, from a lobbyist perspective, the management of this 2024 crisis may not build much on the experiences of 2018 and 2019. As reported by Politico on January 22nd, Boeing is, quote, still rebuilding its lobbying operation and relationships with lawmakers after the fatal crashes of two 737 MAX 8 jets in 2018 and 2019. Seven people who have either interacted with or worked for Boeing or its top lobbyists anonymously spoke with the media outlet, saying that a major reshuffling of Boeing's DC influence team since 2019 will have added an additional level of difficulty in dealing with the company's current MAX 9 issues. It was noted that the newly registered lobbyists don't necessarily have experience working with organizations in aviation, such as airlines, aircraft manufacturers, or the FAA. Instead, it has been noted that part of the team has backgrounds working with Ford or the Federal Highway Administration. One lobbyist told the media outlet, there's no doubt that you're hurt by not having the group that's been through this before, so this will be their first crisis. They would benefit if they had that entire team that was there for the first grounding. Despite reports of relative inexperience, the new in-house team has, quote, responded aggressively to the newest incident. Boeing's government affairs operation told Politico that they've been in touch with offices for every member of Congress since the door plug incident. Ultimately, however, it's hard to imagine even the most experienced lobbyists getting Boeing into a more favorable situation than it is currently in. Indeed, the influence that comes with political contributions and the provision of well-paying jobs 
can only go so far when the spotlight is intensely focused on public safety and Boeing's manufacturing and quality control. In light of such serious issues, it's doubtful that any US politician would now be publicly in favour of granting exemptions to safety-related requirements or advocating for less oversight of the company's activities. What do you think of the relationship between large corporations and the government? Do you think anything needs to change? Share your thoughts by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.